Grand Rapids. Lead off. Number 14, playing center field, Ryan Barrett. Uh, Batting second, number 15, shortstop, Brooks Bachman. Batting third, number seven, the left fielder, Mike Heitkamp. Batting fourth, the catcher, Colin Dip. Batting fifth, the first baseman, Gabe Holum. Batting six, the second baseman, Wyatt Zolke. DHing today for the pitcher, number 11, Luke Kinnan Noon. And pitching today will be Ty Carnes, number six. Batting eighth will be Bo Anderson, playing right field. And batting ninth is Evan Mischke, number 10, playing third base. Coaching for Grand Rapids, Bill Kinnanen, as well as Greg Tula. And now for your Egan Wildcats, as they will be just taking the field. Leading off, center fielder will be Cole Peplinski. Batting second will be third baseman, number six. Caden Gage. Batting, th batting third will be your catcher, number 24, Drew Runkley. DHing today for the pitcher, number seven, Jonah Pellegrom. Your left fielder batting five is AJ Pataglia, number 14. Your right fielder today is Matthew Burgum. First base batting seventh today is Jason Stump, number 13. Playing shortstop batting number eight is Aiden Byron, number 15. And batting ninth, your second baseman, number five, Jackson Amon. Pitching for Egan today is Nick Johnson, number 16. Also here today, we are blessed to have a youth team today. One second. The team on the field is the Egan 11 AAA team coached by Ken Likas. These players will represent the EBA at the 2019 Cooperstown Tournament. Please look for opportunities to support these kids for their hard work, hard work as they want to fundraise for their trip to Cooperstown in 2019. Sharon. All righty, at this time, if you could, please stand. Gentlemen and ladies, please remove your caps. We are blessed to have senior Rachel Suka, who will lead us in the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the rampart we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket with glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still Spangled banner 
Thank you, Rachel. And let's play ball. Well, uh, and this is just kind of our makeshift. Yep. So let's just do this. Are we live? Are we in the horn yet? I don't know if we're live yet. Are we live yet in the truck? How are we, how are we doing? All right. Are we good? All right. Coaching staff is as follows. And welcome, baseball fans, to Wildcat Park. Jeff Burgum here with my colleague in crime, Mr. Pete Nam and Pete. Great day for baseball, isn't it? Great day for baseball. Can't get any better than this. First home game of the season here for the Wildcats. Huge they, crowd. Huge crowd. They're taking on the Grand Rapids high school team coming from the Up North team coming down south. Great day for making, baseball. Grand Rapids has been making this trip for a few years. They played last night, and after today's game, they'll head back up north, but we're fortunate to have them down and we're very grateful they came. So a great crowd on hand here for the, the game Pete, you mentioned that. What, a, what an event. We've got a youth day going on here. We've got alumni recognition. Boy, this is one of the bigger crowds we've seen here for quite a while. I've never seen anything like it, Jeff. It's fantastic with the uh, youth ball players, the alumni as you mentioned, and Egan Travel Baseball has kind of rebranded itself as the Egan Baseball Association, and they've really got some horsepower in their leadership, and people are buying in, and they want to, this is the future of Egan High School Baseball, so they're here. Absolutely. So just a great, great event here. First first annual event of this, so it'll be, I'm sure it'll be a repeat uh, performance here, but great to see the youth, great to see the fans turn out, and it's kind of getting uh, putting Egan Baseball back on the map. Yeah, exactly. We've got a new regime. New regime on the coaching staff. Uh, we're very thankful for the 12 years plus that Coach Rob Walsh gave to Egan High School. And he moved LA on. And, and now Steve Fielder, Butler has 14, taken the reins, Brian and the kids are excited. Derek. And they split with Apple Valley the other night. You know, rough first game, but that's to be expected, maybe first game of the season, especially at the long winter. And then they came back and played an excellent game in game two. And so they're one and one coming into today. And we're ready to start off here for the first inning, first pitch here by senior Nick Johnson on the mound. Yeah, Nick's a lanky left-hander. He's got uh, sneaky speed, and he's got a lot of movement basically on every ball he throws, so he's tough to handle. Grounder ball to the second. Nice job there. Second baseman there. Yeah, almost a brand new infield. Uh, Jackson Amon there on the second base. Nice play there to first yeah, base, Mr. Stump. Caden Gage over at uh, third, played a lot of short last year. Uh, Aiden Byrne was a um, sophomore team player last year. Jackson was a JV player, and Jack Stump kind of split his time. Nice pitch there by Johnson, a strike. Wind's blowing in, it looks like, today, too, so we should have a lot of balls kept in play. But nice to have that wind blowing there, Pete. You know, we don't want to get the temperatures too high. We're maybe pushing 50, so that wind chill makes it about a mid-30s. Yeah, we don't want to get soft, Jeff. No. We're Minnesotans. Minnesotans. No bugs, though. That keeps the bugs away. Keeps them out. Nick Johnson up early on the hitter here, 0-2. Nice job by Johnson. Two quick outs, just what the well catch looking for. Nice job by Nick. Anytime at the beginning of the game, if you're the home team, if you can get a 10 to 12 pitch inning or less and get off the field and go hit, you, it, you, you just grab the momentum. Left fielder, Mike Heitkamp, number seven. I think Coach Butler's gonna take a look at a bunch of different guys at different positions to see where they fit best. Uh, even from the other day's doubleheader to today, there's been a lot of movement and uh, they're trying to figure out where their strengths are and a lot of new guys. So they're willing to do what coach says and good team players. And in a compressed season too, Pete, that makes it even more interesting. You know, and a lot of time to kind of adjust. But again, nice to be out there playing baseball. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. Probably a good three weeks behind schedule minimally. Yeah, I think we're, well, it's something like four games behind what the schedule called for, but I think we'll get them in, barring a lot of rain. Oh, 
just outside. Two and one, but nice job there by Nick so far, being ahead of the hitter, keeping the hitters off balance. Yeah, Nick loves to pitch. I've seen him. He was a teammate of my son Jackson's uh, long ago at tens, and he just loves the game and works hard at it. He's developed into quite a nice pitcher, and I don't know what his plans are after high school, but if he fills out, puts on some kind of man muscles, he's going to be a good, very good pitcher. Well, he's got the length, he's got the height, he's got the, he's a lefty, which makes him a real valuable off the, out of the shoot. Yep. So again, pitchers are hard to come by, as you know, so you've got a good chance to be playing baseball after high school. Quick innings will help in this, as you mentioned, the compressed season, uh, just to keep the pitch counts low, too. Single Nick, there, right? Nick, as I understand, is planning on going to Bethel, where I believe he's going to try to play baseball for Coach Brian Robbie, former standout All American at the Gophers, excellent coach in the MIC. Yeah, good division, good good uh, conference here. Baseball, it seems like their baseball program, the baseball from the MIC, has really gotten stronger. They're it really has. kind of developing that more. And, and I think a lot of that's come from the development of the club programs down here, where they get year-round training. So Grand Rapids on there, on base here with a single. Still two outs. Top of one. Pitch, good pitch by Johnson again, getting ahead of the hitters. A lot of hot dogs being eaten today, Jeff. A lot of kids eating the ballpark food. They're loving it. Hope we have some hot chocolate today, huh? Holy smokes, the <laughs> temperature's are going down. <laughs> The wind chill's cooler in the booth. No sunlight. Today we would kind of wish the wind was blowing out, huh? No doubt. Count is one and one. Again, two outs, top of one. Oh, that should drop that. Poplinski had it. They're going to play it home. Ooh, nice the shot. Um, oh, God. still got a triple. Yeah, Poplinski, Poplinski had that wind is dicey, that wind's blowing in, but they got, got just behind Cole there, made a good effort. Yeah, maybe got just a slightly late jump on that, and then he had to deal with the wind also, and it all kind of played him rather than the other way around. But it takes one to win anyway. Wait a second. Nice job there by Jackson. Get out of the inning. All right. So, one run in, but no harm done. Once again, a reminder, raffle tickets for the 50-50 drawing, $10 at the check-in station. As you can see, we got a representative right here in front of us waving the green ticket. Three for 25, as well as we will be pulling that winner in the, uh, half or the stretch between in the fifth inning stretch. Also here, we're gonna do our first door prize. So grab out your blue tickets, everyone. Now, here's the, here's the caveat. Sharon. Sharon. It's first come, that? first choose. So if you want the best gifts, you wanna get it early. Thanks. First ticket is 2329-20. Let's see what the uh, boys can do at the plate. They, uh, and the reminder, the started slow against a very Once good again, senior two, pitcher, three, veteran nine, pitcher at Apple Valley the other day. Two, zero. Yeah, that first game with the doubleheader, they had their ace going at us. So it was, uh, and we had a, little, a lot of younger players in that first game. So they were seeing an uh, ace varsity pitcher right out the gate. So yeah. eyes were wide open, <laughs> pretty <laughs> well, big there. Welcome to the uh, South Suburban Conference where <laughs> last year I was told we had eight or nine pitchers who hit 90 miles an hour on the gun. And this year of the top 10 prospects, college prospects in the state, five of them play in our conference. I believe two are with Lakeville North. 
So we've got our work cut out for us in a very tough, maybe the toughest baseball conference in the state. Yeah, I talked to Steve Butler about that, Pete, and he did confirm that, that that South Suburban Conference that we're in is a very, very strong, if not the strongest in the state. Yeah, it's been that way for a few years, and again, this is additional training that the players are receiving from very good instructors at Minnesota MASH and Pitch to Pitch and the Cages and a bunch of other programs are really bearing itself out and on the field. So we got number six on the mound there for Grand Rapids. Leading off for your Egan Wildcats, center fielder number 12, Cole Peplinski. Number six, Ty Carnes or Keynes. Ty Carnes from Grand Rapids pitching. Now leading off for the Wildcats, number 12, Cole Peplinski, senior center fielder. Cole's a really fast runner, good player out there. Cole's one of our, our many multi-sport athletes. He plays football, hockey, and now baseball. So really hard to see that right now, get a three-sport athlete in today's age as yeah. far as uh, time commitment and academics. It's, uh, yeah, and his style of play, I think, in every sport is he's 100%, if not more, and he... Uh, it's all out, all out with all Cole. All out, yeah, that's a great guy to have in the leadoff spot. If he gets on, if he has a good on-base percentage this year, that's going to help the team a lot. And he puts pressure on the pitcher because he gets on base and he'll chill, he'll challenge a base. Oh, Cole now, one and two. I talked to my son the other day and he said that Coach Butler is going to be very aggressive on the base paths and we saw that in game two against Ebel Valley. There are certain pitch counts that are nearly automatic steals uh, that probably will get a sign but might not require a sign if you're a base runner. So that's good to hear, it's a fun style to play. So count two and two, Cole now, even up. Pitch, oh, got him looking. Looks like a breaking ball there, good pitch. Yeah, that was a, third baseman, Kaden Gage, that was a six. 12 to six break on that ball, that was a tough one to handle. So Caden Gage, infielder, senior. Dad, longtime wrestling coach at Egan High School. Caden's been a wrestler his whole career. Caden now another multi-sport athlete, so wrestling, wrestler and plays baseball. And I bet he was thrilled to be able to gain 30 pounds since the end of wrestling. Give me back my Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> Ball just in the dirt. You know, coming off the season we had last year, you know, the, the record, if you just look at the record, you'd be very disappointed in the season. It's three and 19, but um, my understanding is we had leads in 12 of those 19 losses, so we weren't as, didn't perform as poorly as you might have thought, and we just needed to come up with a few clutch hits and maybe some better defense or timely pitching, so we're not far off. Good senior leadership on this team, too. Good group of boys, and again, I think we know with the, with the new coaching staff, again, uh, you mentioned it, nice to have out to Rob Walsh, you know, past coach here, put a lot of years in here, great for the program. But, you know, changes changes happen. Yep. And, and Steve now coming in, and uh, the boys are excited. Yep. Kind of a new start, and now I think it's uh, been yeah. real positive. And Steve's got some good street cred on paper. He played uh, D2 ball himself. I believe he was a middle infielder, which is a good position to, to become a coach from, uh, just like catcher is, because uh, he sees the game from that, you know, good part of the field. And he uh, played some pro ball, some minor league ball, and he uh, played for the St. Paul Saints. So the players knew right away who they had coming in, at least from a playing background. I think that gained some steam right away. Third batter to play, Drew Grunkley now. Pops it out to right field, and it's a one, two, three, first inning for the Wildcats. So they'll hit the field now, down one, zero. Once again, a reminder, we do have the 50-50 going on. $10 a ticket, as well as three for 25. Everybody grab out your blue tickets for a door prize. Is on? We don't need a time. 9 7 0 
You can't do a zero on the board or won't? Yeah. It's just one. Uh, are not. Probably has to go all the way up to 99. Nice picture by Johnson. Got the first out there. Pop out to left field. Again, early, early in the season, if you can, you know, any one of our pitchers can have uh, quick at bats, one, two, three, four pitch at bats. It's just going to help the team. You get that cold weather days we've had, now you get that pitcher gets in a grind situation. It gets to be brutal on the arm. It's cold Boy, out there. And I know from our players, they were excited to get outside. I can't imagine what Grand Rapids felt like. They might still have snow on their field. I think this may be Hawaii to them here in the sunny <laughs> Minneapolis area, up the Grand Rapids. Nice gotta, picture, my neck. I say I'm a little more, I'm a little disappointed. I'm seeing a lot of long sleeve undershirts in Grand Rapids. I thought I'd see some short sleeve, maybe to intimidate the Twin City guys. Nice job by Nick here to get up early on the batter. One and two count. Looks like we got number 11 for Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids the plate. Number 11 is Luke Kinnanen. Kinnunen. Nice pitch there by Johnson, nice strikeout. You know, Nick, to his advantage, works quickly, and I think that's uh, it's always something a pitcher will find in his best interest. Hey, Grand Rapids, the right fielder, number 16, Bo Anderson. So Bo Anderson here at the plate, number 16 for Rapids. A quick two outs here so far, top of the second. Good start for the Cats. Inside, that little brush off. Welcome to Egan. Yeah, today is a good day for baseball, but Monday looks like it's going to be close to 80 and humid. That's even better baseball. Go weather. figure that, huh? Yeah, welcome to Only Minnesota. Only in Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> you want to change the weather, just stick around for a few minutes. And the pitch by Johnson. Nice pitch there, good. Looks like a curveball coming in for the strike, one and two. And right to the mound there, nice job by Nick. Good inning there, needed that, one, two, three. Excellent look by the Cats. Now I gotta get the sticks going. Go price time. Blue tickets out, everyone. Winning ticket is two, three, two, nine, seven, three. Two, three, two, nine, Give me a cue for music, Casey, whenever you're ready. Music, okay. Baseman. 
Jack Stump. Jack Stump, number 13. And we got Jack Stump up here at the plate for the Wildcats at the bottom of two. Jack is a senior, first baseman. I'm sorry, Jonah Pellegrome. Go, 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 go. Out. Nice. Jonah Pellegrome, home run. He's got yard. Holy smokes. Way Jonah. to go, Jonah. Jonah has been working for years with the uh, Blizzard Club Baseball programs with batting instruction and playing with them in the fall. <clears throat> and he's got one of the more polished swings on the team, and he's a junior, so he, he could have a big year. He had a few bullets the other day against Apple Valley. Yeah, he's been swinging the ball, the bat real well. AJ is another one of the uh, seniors, part of that core leadership group, and kind of as they go, so goes the rest of the team. But what a bomb there by Pellegrom there. Holy smokes, he's been hitting the ball well that first game. As you mentioned, Pete, he really stroked, stroked it well, and then he's been working hard on that swing, that lefty, and he got that wind, and boy, he just took it. Yeah, he hit it out at about the 360 mark, and that was more or less against the wind, so that was a poke. So nice start there for, the, for him for the game and gets us on the board. AJ is one of those guys who does pretty well wherever you put him. He's a, he's a very diverse player out there. He can play many positions, got some speed, throws yep. the ball well, good pitcher. Yep, every team needs a few of those guys. There's a poke there to second. Good job of staying down on that ball by their second baseman. That's the ticket in the early, early spring is, as Roy Smalley was saying on a Twins broadcast the other night, it's much easier to stay low and then come up on a higher ball, a ball that hops up high, than it is to stay high and go low quickly. And he did a very nice job of that. Junior Matthew Bergman at the plate, number 18, right fielder and pitcher. Yeah, Matthew's demonstrated a lot of talent and love for baseball since uh, he and Jackson were teammates as, what, seven-year-olds? Yeah, they've, year they've been for a long time together. Loves the game, also a multi-sport athlete, good hockey player. Don't know where he's at in his college search. I think he's looking at St. John's, but it's hard to get in there from what I hear. Tough school, <laughs> tough school to get in. <laughs> Excellent academic institution. Yes. Good eye by Matthew, 2-1 count. So yeah, Matthew and Jackson have been you know, teammates for many, many years. Good to have kind of that friendship throughout the years going to, you know, through baseball together. And yeah, good teammates, a lot of support for each other. You know, Matthew throughout his career has shown nice uh, discipline at the plate. He's got a good stick at a one or two nice hits the other day against Apple Valley, so I expect big things from him. Looked good on the hill, too. Uh, Apple Valley was pretty aggressive with the plate. Apparently, they have got a lot of seniors, so they weren't going to be too intimidated by really anybody we threw out on the mound. Right. Jack is, uh, according to his dad, uh, headed towards the University of St. Thomas next year and uh, won't be playing baseball, but he likes what they offer in uh, academics. Strike good, there. Really good kid. He and his uh, few of his teammates have been working together, training hard at baseball, starting out way down at the Rosemont Dome years ago. I used to see them as little kids. Now they're almost grown men. Yeah, it's amazing how old these kids are getting there, people. We're, at least we're not, though. We're staying at no, our no. young, young spry age. Got that right. Good 20s. Feeling good? My career gets better every year I'm away from it. And strike out there by Stump. Good pitch up, but good recovery. A good inning there with the Wildcats. Jonah Pellegrome, nice um, yard hit over the wall. Gets a run up for the Cats. We're all tied at 1-1. Tied at Once again, we have a reminder for the 50-50 raffle, you can get your tickets at the check-in booth, as well as two representatives walking around with the green tickets. $10 a ticket for $3.25. I 
That was on one, yeah. How do we get them back to one? All right, we're gonna take it there you go. Two, nine, five, two. How do I get that one? All right, we're back to Wildcat Park here, top of the third inning. Looks like we're it's a 1-1 tied up. Recent run there by the Wildcats, a nice home run by Jonah Pellegrom over right field fence. Getting a visit by senior Dane Miller, pitcher for the Wildcats. Dane's about 5'10 with the Afro 6'1. Threw an excellent second game against Apple Valley the other night, headed towards Columbia University in New York City to pursue engineering. Bright guy. Excellent student, excellent baseball player, and also an excellent uh, engineer for the clock management. So here to give us some uh, clock management tips. Don't know where we'd be without him. Nice corner there. A full count there by Nick Johnson. And great pitch here by Nick. Beautiful strike out there. Good strong start here by the Wildcat pitcher. You know, Egan just looks like, it. even though it's early in the season, Jeff, they just look like they have a lot of confidence and uh, love for the game. There's a lot of hustle being shown and uh, snapping it around on the, around the horn after a strikeout. Fun to watch. And the pitch, uh, bunt attempt foul. In a couple weeks, that'd be an excellent thing to do on this field because that grass is gonna get pretty slow once it gets thick from some rain and growth. Now it's a bit of a hard pan field. With a nice chunk here or there due to the lovely climate here in, yeah. in Minnesota. Yeah, they, uh, in fact, last Saturday, I, I'm sure your son mentioned it, uh, they had to get their boots on and walk out and kick snow so that it would melt. Nice job there by Cole, center fielder. Kind of took a step in and came back, adjusted the ball well. Nice job by Poplinski. Nice, nice pitcher by Nick Johnson. Yeah, that, that comes around a little slower when you haven't been outside a lot. The depth perception, the speed of the ball, the wind, the sunlight. Oh, it's a whole new game. You're playing indoors all this time to kind of get the feel of the ball. You go outside, it's a whole new game. Yeah, doing well today, though. But again, nice job at the bottom by Nick. Really has good control, good presence out there, throwing the ball well, nice authority. Yeah, if he was in the majors right now, he'd be well under that uh, pitch clock they're using. Nice pitch again. Nick really is attacking the hitters, not getting, letting him get too comfortable at the plate. Boy, it's so important as a pitcher to get up on the batter early. You just, you just have so much more opportunities, weapons to use. Yeah, and your, your fielders love that too. Great job by Nick. Boy, one, two, three, real good control. Nice presence. Good inning here by, by Nick and the Wildcats.
we're back here at Wildcat Park. Wildcats bottom of three innings, tied at 1-1. And we've got sophomore, number 15, Aiden Byrne. Aiden's another multi-sport athlete, good hockey player, very agile kid, uh, very good with his glove. I think that's why he's getting a look at short today. No, he played football earlier in his career. Not sure if he's stuck with that. Yeah, I believe he kind of, I think he hung up the cleats, I want to say, for football with the hockey and baseball. Oh, there's a little gift there by <clears throat> by yeah. Grand Rapids, Aiden gets an early Christmas gift. Yeah, on a two-strike count. <laughs> two -strike. He, was, uh, he had excellent presence of mind. He swung. I think he heard Jackson. the ball Amen. hit the dirt after his swing, so he took off, and he made them make a play, and he overthrew the catcher over through the first baseman. Good hustle by Aiden. So at the plate now for the Wildcats, Jackson Amon, number five, junior, second baseman. Might see a bunt here. Nice play there by Jackson. Got the advance the runner, did his, did his role. Good job there by Jackson. Again, we mentioned earlier that Jackson and Matthew have been teammates, Matthew Berger, for many years, so. Yeah, it's good fundamental baseball. You know, with the bats being deadened uh, over the years, kind of steadily, just to make it a safer game, small ball has slowly kind of worked its way back into the the game itself, and it's fun to watch. I enjoy that kind of baseball. And especially early in the year, too. It's colder outside. The ball's going to not jump off as much off the bat. And yep. yep. And early in the year, the guys don't have their swings down yet, yeah, except bunt. Jonah. Jonah's <laughs> proved us wrong there as he yeah. things that homer into the right field. Bunting is one of those things that's not only uh, pragmatic, but it can help you out of a slump if you're not going well at the plate. So nice job here by Cole Popinski, leadoff batter back for the Wildcats, number 12, senior center fielder. You can see Coach Butler's got uh, Aiden Byrne being fairly aggressive at second base with one out, good secondary lead in case there's a pass ball. Good block by the catcher there to keep that in front of him. Now count three and all, it'll be curious if they give Cole the green light to go or or have him take? That's a good question. Early in the season, you can go either way with that. You don't want a guy to get complacent, but you also want to have some runners. Now they have him taken all the way, so nice job by Kopinski to take that pitch. He gets on base on a walk. Egan's got something cooking here in the bottom of three. Let's see if the wrestler can come through here with a hard hit ball, get something poked through the infield. Runners on first and second, only one out. Again, bottom of three, all tied at one. Two hits so far by Grand Rapids and one for the Wildcats. But that one hit was a nice one. Yeah, the guys, you know, for the little baseball they played outdoors, they've, uh, they're swinging the bat well. They're showing pretty good plate discipline which is not always the case early in the season, but it's probably the, the right way to start out. They are coming. That's gonna go to second to first, get him at first, two outs. Yeah, it didn't look like he had confidence that he could get the, uh, I believe that was a double steal, and it looked like uh, Cole was barreling into second pretty quickly. So the he first he took a look and said, nah, I ain't gonna yeah. get that. Probably a good decision. Good they choice. get the sure out. Yep. So Drew Brinkley, senior catcher. Drew's been at the varsity level since a sophomore. Yes. He's been just a solid player, just an excellent catcher back there. Just phenomenal athlete. Yeah, great field leader, excellent person. Really puts the team first. That gets a pop up and right, and that gets caught. Nice ball there, but just missed that one. They get out, yeah, kind of just got a little bit under it. But again, nice job of the Wildcats. Got some runners on base, a little bit of pressure there. So we still remain one to one after three here at Wildcat Park. Jeff Bergham here with Pete Amon. 
of ETV. And we're back here for the Wildcat Parker, top of fourth inning. Still all tied at one, Egan versus Grand Rapids. Nick Johnson, Pete, really throwing a nice game so far. Really control the game, controlling the, the pitch, good low pitch count. Yeah, working quickly, low pitch count. Friend of your fielders. Again, I have to comment on the size of this crowd. We're up in the few hundreds here, and it's fun. I'm guessing the players are having a ball with this. You know, you, you plan events like this, Pete, as far as uh, Youth Day, Alumni Day, kind of the first we've done of this, and, and you, you roll the dice with the weather. You just don't know what's going to happen. And, and although it's kind of a cooler day today, but the sun's out now, the wind's kind of dying down. It's just a beautiful day for baseball, and you can't beat that here in April. No, and the kids, you know, the little youth players, they're running around, they're looking for foul balls, they're racing each other to pick them up and get them back into play, and it's fun to watch. It's a, it's a great vibe. So there's a walk there by Nick Jess. I believe that may be his first of the day. I think I, it is. That's, no. that's pretty good. He's been very efficient. So now let's see what the lefty can do to keep the runner at first close. So at the plate now for Grand Rapids, number 19, Colin Dibb. You don't, you don't expect a bunt out of your four hitter, but you never know in a low scoring game. Nice pitch there by Nick attacking the batter. Yeah, he's not bunting. No, he has a full swing there. He wants to get her going. They always say if you foul back straight back to the backstop, you just missed it, and that's what he just did. See if you can hit a hard ground ball to the middle infielders. Nice pitch there. Looks like a change up there by Nick. Nice pitch. Again, nice control of the game so far. Really going right in the top of the fourth. It really, besides that first inning, they're well under control throughout the whole game. Yeah, you know, I mentioned Dane Miller earlier and how bright a student he is going to Columbia University. Uh, Nick is also a very bright student. Nice Ooh. play there by Grunkley, really a heads up play. Strike him out, throw him out, double play, love that. Beautiful job there by Grunkley again. You know, Drew's just been a stellar ca catcher back there for the Wildcats, but just a smart player. You know, yeah. he, he got the strikeout, nice laser to second base, good job yeah. out there by Amon. Nice tag. And yeah, and that was a curveball in the dirt that Drew handled for strike three with first base occupied. The batter's out, so he gunned it to second with a great throw. 
Oh, there's a shot there, but pitchers love that. You know, they get that base on balls and and they you kinda they get kinda yeah, they gave a freebie up and we get a double play to get that, that runner out. Yep. That's kind of a gift back. They'll brand they'll take new, that all day. Brand new start in there, you know, he being the guy on the first pitch, the five hitter, but actually that's not so bad. Sometimes you gotta show a little wildness. My hunch is here, Jeff, they're gonna send him. See if they can get a runner in scoring position with two out in a low scoring game. See what Drew can do here. If Nick goes quickly to the plate, that'll help. Oh, just missed, it looked like a good pitch here. Just yeah. missed on the outside, looks like a one and one. Yeah, he would be happy living out there all game. Ooh, just high, nice pitcher by Nick. Now a little, little in the hole, two and one. Two out, so just need to get a grounder pop up, get a, get a nice pitch. They can hit, fielders feel. Nice, nice job there by Nick to get back in the count, even up at two, two. Nick does a lot of pitching to contact, which is what you hope for. You've got a good defense behind you. Ooh, that looked good here. Looking good from up here, Pete. Full, full count now. Don't lose this batter. No, runner will be off with the pitch once he sees he's going to the plate, and then the uh, play will likely be at first. So a good bet out the plate there by the Grand Rapids hitter, number 12. That was uh, Wyatt. Zolke, he kind of battled back. Good play discipline. Pitching for Grand Rapids, number 17, Bo Winkler. Pitching, Bo Winkler. Yeah, Nick's just got to stay within himself here. Runners on first and second with two out. Just start out if he can get ahead here. That'll be his friend. Nice pitch there, Nick going right at him. Now it's good. Get up on the hitter. Nice pitch there, own one. Rap was a little bit of a threat here, Pete, on top of the fourth inning. They got runners in first and second, still with, the, with two outs. So a pop up or a ground out. Yep, just be patient. If you see a ground ball, look it into your glove, make a good solid throw to first. Go in and hit. Hey, big infield, the dog, get dirty. Nice pitch there by Nick. Good job again, going right after the hitter. Up in the count now, one and two. Nice pitch to the outside part of the plate against uh, looks to be a pretty good hitter here. Good pitch here, good battle there by the Grand Rapids hitter. Kind of stay alive. I think if Nick changes speeds here effectively, he's gonna catch him a little aggressive and may maybe out in front of it. Be a weak crown ball or possibly a strikeout. Hey, leave alone, leave alone. And the pitch. Just outside, he had a pitch to waste there, two and two. Again, yeah, don't good, give him anything to hit. Good spot, you know, one and two count. See if he bites on that outside pitch. Just foul. Good hustle over there by Caden. You can tell he's a good athlete over there, likes to play ball. And 
good break on that one, even though it was foul. You know, important part of the game here, Pete. You know, the game's been kind of cruising along. We're 1-1, but now a little bit of a threat here by Grand Rapids. They kind of want to keep, keep us in bay, get it checked, don't let them get on base, and yeah, get, it, just, get out of here all tied up still at one. Just do the right things when you, once you see the ball hit at you. Nice job by Johnson. Beautiful job to recover. Strong effort by Nick. The scoreboard's weird. Once again, remember this is the last half inning. Get your 50 50 raffle tickets. And we're back to Wildcat Park here. Jonah Pilgrim leading off, bottom of fourth. Jonah, DH, had a beautiful long bomb. Our only hit of the game was went yard, and got that Egan run up. Yep. So Jonah really has been swinging the bat well really early in the year. And you made a comment, Pete, which is, which is accurate, that you know Jonah has spent a lot of time in the cages and really working hard. Baseball is his favorite sport by far. He is also a multi-sport athlete, plays hockey as well. Yep, played and, football uh, early in his career and comes from kind of an athletic background. His dad is the uh, CFO for the Minnesota Wild. So he's been around a lot of good athletes. But really, Jonah has loved his baseball. He's really got a passion for it. So he's really put some time in the cages and in doing club ball along with uh, the youth uh, city baseball and, and it's showing right now. Yeah. And he's one of those unique kids uh, or baseball players in that he loves DHing. He actually prefers it. Some guys don't like it because there's so much time when they're not doing anything between at bats, but Jonah just, he's all about hitting and I think he just thinks about it between at bats and you can see it's, it works for him. And Jonah spent some time in the weight room as well, so he's really, really dedicated to the sport, I think. He'd love to be playing baseball uh, after high school, and I think he's got a good shot at it. Yeah, he and his dad were having kind of a friendly contest about weight to see when Jonah would catch and pass Jeff. And he blew by him and I, and I, 15 I, pounds. I believe, that, <laughs> I believe that's happened. <laughs> so nice here job by Jonah to kind of battle back here, count two and two. And nice job, they're actually a three and two, so Jonah draws a walk, so nice on-base percentage by Jonah here today. Yeah. Excellent at bat. Again, with a low scoring game, runners are at a premium, so if you can just cause some, get some base runners and cause some havoc out there, it's gonna possibly push across a go ahead and maybe winning run. So A.J. Battaglia, senior, infielder, outfielder, pitcher, multi-position player, a real valuable player on this team. And nice job there, they got Jonah running, so so good job there by Coach Butler to get some get some players in scoring position because you're in a game now, it's kind of runs right at a premium. You want to yeah, get people I, out there. that was an interesting play. I don't think it was a bunt and run. I, don't, I didn't see Jonah take off with the pitch, but he saw that that A.J. had pulled back on the bunt and it, the ball hit the dirt and uh, alertly took off and made it to second. So now we have a runner in scoring position. I'm just, I'm just announcing 
announcing what the unit is, and just keeping them running the school. But we'll do, you know, I'll remind them that if they want to get back, one more time, we're going to pull it. Looks like there's a little discussion at the mound here, Pete, by Grand Rapids. Yet, and we mentioned, you know, Nick having such a real strong game for Egan, but the Grand Rapids pitcher's been throwing real well today. Yeah, they're around the dish a lot. They're getting ahead in the counts early, and they are um, working quickly, and that's all in their, their favor. And as I mentioned a couple times earlier, your, your infielders and your outfielders love that because they don't get distracted and they don't get down on, even if a couple base runners get on. For bottom of four, right? Yes. Okay. We get that figured out yet? Are they, they're close? They're not? Or no? So with zero outs here and Jonah at second, we'll see what Coach Butler does here. It could be another bunt situation to move him over. Now the question is, will he bunt down third or first? Count one and all. He had him swinging. Bottom of four. Still one to one. So tight game. Runs are at a premium, base runners are at a premium. So again, just a real. Yeah, here's one of those situations where, you know, AJ early in the season, it's not like he's killing the ball yet, but if he could make some contact here, he's, he'll gain some confidence. So nice eye by AJ now, count three and one. So interesting now. I, I would imagine if it's there, you take it, you run it, you hit it, you swing, if not. Yeah, three and one and two and oh are those Same. counts where you just go, go, go until you know it's not a good pitch. And there you go. Great eye again, first and second, no outs. I would anticipate a sack bunt attempt or two. Now by the number 18, the right fielder, Matthew. Although it's Matthew and he's got a good stick, so you may not want to do that with him. Um, they're gonna have a little conversation, okay. So that, I don't know if that's going to be it for the... Uh, well, well, we have a break. Let's uh, pull those blue tickets. Huh? Why not? Let's have a prize. So again, a little pressure here now. A little, little something going here for... Wait a second. It is 2-3. Grand Rapids. Two, nine, four, yep, six. making a pitching change. They're making a change. Three. Center fielder, two, nine, I'm guessing, has four, a good six. arm and Can't probably throws a good fastball. will be coming in. So first uh, second, pitching three. change of the two, game. 2-9-7-6. Two three, two nine, seven six. Also lost and found. We have a first baseman's mitt, Brown Rawlings. First baseman's mitt up here by the booth, left over by the field. Brown Rawlings, first baseman's mitt. So bottom of four, we have a new pitcher in place for Grand Rapids center fielder. Didn't see a number there. I can't see the number on his jersey yet. Who that is? 14. He was a center field. Okay, so number 14. Now pitching for Grand Rapids. Moving from center to the pitcher. Ryan Barrett. Ryan Barrett. So Ryan Barrett comes in here to, to pitch for Grand Rapids. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning, tied at one. Egan's got something cooking here. Runners on first and second. No outs, and Ryan Barrett now comes in to take over for pitching duties for the Grand Rapids. A good bit of coaching here, too. You're following up your starter with a harder throwing reliever. Center fielders are typically known for having strong arms and he's no different. Once again, reminder, 50-50 raffle tickets, $10 and three for 25, last half inning. So Ryan Barrett now throwing for the Grand Rapids. You would expect Matthew Burgum to be patient and maybe take a strike against the reliever, but if you want to be aggressive, you just need a good ground ball, deep fly ball, or even a medium fly ball will get the runner from second to third. Or you could just clear the base pass with a gapper. Well, that could do, you know, that would do too. Mm -hmm. 
Ben and Brieg in the right field. Number 18, Matthew Burnham. Okay, here we go now. No outs. We're on the perch in second. Scoring chances here for the Wildcats. Oh, nice punt there by Burgum. Excellent. Yeah, punt. that's a that's a good play there. Wow. You know, excellent. That punt. just dropped. That's a sack bunt down <laughs> the third baseline that turned into a drag bunt for a base hit. Base is loaded. This is outstanding. Ready for the Wildcats. First base for number 13, Jack Stump. That's that good parenting by his mother. That was nice. You did some training with him in the early days. It wasn't the coaching staff, Takes was it? Takes a woman's it? touch. <laughs> yeah. So Egan's has something cooking here. No outs, bases loaded. And a ball. So really, Egan really put some pressure on now at the plate. Senior, number 12. I'm sorry, number 13, Jack Stump. So yeah. again, this is a nice, you know, Jack, good power contact hitter. Boy, it'd be nice to get a couple, a nice hit here. Single, double. Yeah, get a little confidence early in the season. Knock one or two in here. Okay, two and one. Jack's a good player, excellent first baseman, really a good contact hitter. Got some good power behind him. Yeah, another, another guy who's been working at the game a long time. Good cut. Good cut there by Jack. He had that one just a little bit off. Pete, he had a nice swing on that too. That would have really went some distance. Yeah, here, you know, early in the season, I saw this at Apple Valley the other day too. He's pulling out a little bit. Once he corrects that, he'll be driving the ball hard. Good eye by Jack. Now here go, count full three and two. What do you do here, huh? Three, is it, if it's there, you gotta go for it, but three, yeah. two. Be aggressive. If it's close, gotta go. Oh, nice way Just to hang missed. in there, Jack. He was hanging tight. Yep, just missed, good foul ball. Boy, nice, nice uh, pressure cooker here. Thinking about the, is that Ryan Garrett, that pitcher coming into a cooker here, huh? Center fielder to this. Oh, nice eye. Good job there by Jack. He gets an RBI. RBI on the walk. walk. Can't beat it. Let's keep it going with Aiden Byrne coming up here at sophomore. Now by number 15, the shortstop, Aiden Byrne. So nice here, opportunity by the sophomore, Aiden Byrne, really getting some, some uh, varsity level experience right now and talk about a position he's in now. Is it a sophomore at the plate? Bases loaded, no outs. Yeah. Bottom of four now, Egan's up 2-1, we're on a roll. Yeah, just some contact here, just, you know, get a run across or anything but a double play ball is, is uh, pretty much acceptable in this situation. So again, Pete, we've been talking about the event today. This is a kind of a first annual event here for the Wildcats as far as Youth Day and Alumni Day. I think, Pete, this is one of the biggest crowds I have seen here at, at this ballpark. I can't remember a bigger crowd. We, I've, we, I've, have, we have probably close to, I'd say, three or 400 people. I've never seen one this big, and it's really exciting. Well, I'd like to thank all the Egan Youth Baseball team, coaches and players, as well as parents and alumni here that are here today. Grab all your blue tickets. We're gonna do two door prizes. First number is 2-3. So not sure, Pete, two, if eight. they're looking at a potential Six, pitching change here for Grand Rapids or not. They're going to keep, One by looks Clark. like they're moving something Second around. Rise. They got two, a pitching three. change here going on for Grand Rapids. Two, okay, from, from, we just heard from the press box, the first two, baseman three. now pitching for three, Grand Rapids. 2-3. And not sure of the number who the first baseman was. Got plenty of time for the raffle that we got going on, but 50 50 raffle tickets, $10 and three. Okay, number 13 we'll for Grand Rapids the, uh, is Gabe Hollum or Holum for Grand Rapids. Now he gets into a real pressure cooker, Pete. He got bases loaded, no outs. Now, no, down, down two to one, bottom of four. There's no room for air here. You got bases loaded. You got to throw that ball, get a strike in. So nice big opportunity here for the Wildcats to do more damage. And again, big crowd here. Great job here by the Egan uh, Baseball Booster Club to organize this event. Nice job by Coach Steve Butler and the coaching staff. And Pete, nice to have you here. We yeah. want to also welcome our new announcer, Casey Lux. Casey is a 
uh, pass teammate, uh, Coach Butler. Play that Concordia College in St. Paul. And Casey does a nice job up here announcing the game. And we we'll are talking to Casey between the innings here to get some dirt on Coach Butler. We'll get that later. We'll announce that probably over a beverage or two. We'll kind of screen it first and maybe discuss it on ETV later. But probably not. <laughs> Yeah, I know Coach Butler uh, came in all fired up uh, to be at the helm for the first year, and, and uh, one of the key things he wanted to do was connect with the community and specifically the Egan Baseball Association. We've done that here with our first home game. Uh, Steve's family owns a handful of McDonald's in the area, so if you're uh, patronizing McDonald's, thank you. And the which, Butler family is very grateful. In which I'm sure your son and mine have frequented that, that establishment from time to time. So we got a ball one here. So again, Aiden Byrne, number 15, sophomore, in a big spot here for the Wildcats. Good patience at the plate by Aiden. He wanted to see a strike, and now he's got a 1-1 one -one count. Time to be aggressive. And the pitch. Uh, now two, uh, one and two, got that outside corner. Now Ian's got to protect now. Anything close to the plate, got to get some contact. Yeah, he's probably got a guess breaking ball here and maybe react to a fastball. The pitch. And good eye there, good patience. No one's coming. Count now two and two. So again, bottom of four. Egan now up two to one. Bases are loaded, no out. So great opportunity here for the Wildcats to do more damage. You know, he went fastball there on a 1-2 count, so he might stick with the heat. The pitch. Yeah. And that's, uh, that was a ball four. So I thought that was, uh, okay, so it's a ball four. Another RBI walk. We'll take him any way we can get him. See what, see what number five Amon can do here. So Jackson Amon. We call him Amen Amen. Amen Amen. <laughs> you can call him anything. Just don't oh, call him late for dinner. Oh, Mr. Casey Lexer. Love it there. We'll, we'll get the names right here. So Jackson Amen, number five, playing second base today. He had a nice start against Apple Valley. Got a few hits in the doubleheader to start his varsity career. And, played, and played both games. So got some nice playing time. So nice to see Jackson doing well. So again, good spot for Jackson. So 2-0 count here. Normally it's an aggressive hitter's count, but with the pitcher not finding the plate, they might lay off till they see a strike. And there's your strike, 2-1. and one. But again, nice look there by Jackson. Make them throw strikes. Count now 2-1. and one. Foul back. Good swing by Jackson. Just missed that. Now count 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, again here, it could be a, you know, with a seasoned pitcher, he might go off speed here, but with the situation being bases loaded, I would expect a fastball. Oh, nice, looks like a curve. That was kind of a nice curve, good pitch. Not much Jackson can do there. They get their first outs, so that, that was a gutty, gutty throw by the pitcher. Yeah, that's a great pitch. So, Cole Popinski, they call him Pepsi. The boys do. Let's see Center what he can do here. Great situation for him. Get through. Gets a run. Gets a run in. Oh, and he's safe, and he gets a run in. So again, another boy, another gifter by the Wildcats uh, for the Wildcats by Grand Rapids. And yeah, you know what I loved about that, Jeff, is Cole. Cole hit a very routine ground ball to short, but he took off like a bolt, and that forced the shortstop to field that and make a throw immediately and he didn't have control of it. Great hustle by Cole. Boy, and you, and you know, Pete, you know, if you've coached over the years, you know the game real well. Boy, that just can drive a pitcher nuts. You throw your pitch, you get your good pitch, you get a good kind of a routine grounder, that's an out, and they don't, and you bobble it. That's yeah. a toughie. That's tough. Yeah, you got to get over it in a hurry. You got to have a short memory and a, a forgiving heart because that could be the same fielder that saves you. Or run the next time. That's how those pitchers are. I, mean, I don't know how you do it out there. You're on the hill all by yourself. You get it's a mental game out there, big time. Yep. Hey, 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 
They're going to get that runner to tag another run, so they get the runner in. Nice job there. Excellent job. A base running by Jack Stumpf. Went mm -hmm. right back to third and waited for Coach Butler's call. Nice job there by Caden to get that nice RBI in. Second to play, the catcher, number 24, Drew Brunkley. So Drew, again, we talked about Drew, senior catcher for the Wildcats. This is, you know, third year of varsity level playing experience. Just an all-around excellent athlete. Well, we're pleased to be joined in the booth by Dan Haley, former standout pitcher from Mankato State University. Make Egan great again, that's his slogan, Dan Haley. Mega. So Dan Haley on the, on the Egan Baseball Booster Club board is our treasurer. Put a lot of hours in behind the scenes when I'd like to have Dan, and Dan's running around here and flying around, busy. Working the crowd, working the audience, trying to get some votes for the office. Nice job there by Drew at the plate now. Now 5-1 Egan at the uh, bottom of the fourth inning. Yeah, Drew is, uh, Drew's been known as just a solid hitter and all-around all player for many years. And nicked him. So Drew gets on base, now, now bases are now loaded again. And now we come up with uh, our designated hitter, number seven, Jonah Pellegrom. Be nice to see another bullet hit here. I'm sure he's going he brimming with confidence. Well, he could blast this game wide open here with a, with a multi-base hit or, heaven forbid, a second yard. He's not afraid to hit. So Jonah Pellegrim having a great day. On base percentage is 100%. He drew a walk, I believe, and got that home yeah, run. His, so uh, he's, uh, I think his on base for the season must be 800 plus. And there's a nice pitch, a good aggressive throw by the pitcher. He's going right after him. You good really spot. can't, you can't dance around him. You got base no, loaded. If you, you if you, if, if you were able, and I'm sure Grand Rapids couldn't have, scouted our hitters, but you want to work Jonah outside. Nice. Middle, middle of the plate and in, he's going to destroy you. Nice cut there by Jonah. He was thinking yard there, Pete. He had a big swing on that ball. Yep, not bashful. So now 0-2, Jonah behind the count, protect the plate. See what we can do. And here's the pitch. Outside, good pitch by the Rapids pitcher there, don't want to give him too much here. Might expect a breaking ball. He's got a good tight curve ball. He might use it here. See where he starts it. And then Gabe Holm, the pitcher again for Grand Rapids. The pitch by Gabe. Nice inside. Look there by Jonah, held off nicely. Count now two and two. Again, bottom of four. Egan kind of Getting four runs here in this bottom of the fourth inning. Up now 5-1. And that's going to drop in for a hit. Nice job by Jonah. He's going to get two RBIs. What a beautiful job of hitting there by Pellegrom. Excellent. And he gets a double. Hitting. He took that. He inside out of that ball. That was on the middle half. And normally he would pull that. But it maybe caught him off guard. And he just made a great inside out swing. Dumped it into left for a two run single. Great piece of hitting. Late number 14, the center fielder. So Jonah again, Pete continues to really swing the bat well early in the year, just really doing an awesome job yeah. staying to the ball, eyeing the ball, and not only great plate. for not only great for him, Jeff, but that rubs off on your teammates. That's contagious. Yeah, you know, we get that hitting contagious feeling. Yeah, that's what they need. If they can get a little uh, momentum early in the season, they'll feel like they can beat anybody in that tough conference. Well, that drops in between the catcher and third baseman, luckily for AJ. I'm sure he'd like to keep this going. You never, you know, you got a great rally going. You don't want to be the guy to end it. You just want to do your best, make a good cut, have a good at bat. Good cut there by AJ. Yeah, it seems like he's seeing the ball well here.
Good eye there by AJ. Not sure who we've got Thank coming in. Looks like we've got a Egan reliever coming in for Nick Johnson. Can't see who it is yet, but that's probably a good idea with the lead and the idea of keeping pitch counts low here in the cooler weather. Full count now, three and two. And they got him. All right, great inning by the Cats. Excellent inning. Boy, I tell you, six runs there in the bottom of the four. Beautiful job by Wild Egan Wildcats. And we'll come back for the start of the fifth inning in time for the fifth inning stretch here. Here's our total for today, and thank you all for donating. Our total amount was $1,080, so our winner will... And the Cats are starting out the uh, top of the fifth. Nick Johnson is still on the hill. Looks like we've got Evan Cleary warming up in the pen. Nick's throwing a nice game so far. He's only given up two hits. I believe only two walks. Nice pitch right down the middle, very aggressive, going right at the hitters. Trusting his defense as a smart thing for a pitcher to do. Builds up team camaraderie and those guys will come through for you when they need to. Worked him in there, excellent pitch. Busting him on the handle. See what he goes with here on a one-two count. My hunch is it's off speed. We'll see which one it is, change or curve. Deep ball hit out to Cole. Can of corn. Good move on the ball. Made a nice first step. Caught in the left center. Cole's a good leader out there. Excellent athlete. Very fast. He'll cover a lot of ground for us. <clears throat> and nice to see Nick Johnson still out there. Pete having a heck of a game. Really throwing the ball well. Yeah, Quick you know, innings. Even before that good inning there at the plate, we looked very confident. And that's something maybe we lacked late in the season last year. And so to see a, a younger team with a lot of guys at new spots uh, play with confidence is very encouraging. And the pitch. Nick Johnson having a great game so far, pitching the ball well. Yeah, even when he misses, his misses are not far outside the zone. More generous umps might even give him a few more strike calls, but can't complain. The umps have been very consistent and solid today. There we go. Nick comes back real nicely. Count two and one. 
Yeah, that's a sign of a strong pitcher when when you're down in the count, you get behind in the count, but you battle back right away with a strike. Stay down, Jack. A little bit of a bobble there by Jack and yeah, uh, enabled the runner to gain a step on him and beat the throw. That's a good pitch by Nick again there too. We talked about yeah. a little earlier as far as good, you do your job, good pitch and the grounder there kind of handcuffed Jack a little bit there at first yeah. base. You know, it's just a, you get one out and you just have a runner at first, you work the hitter. Middle infielders and third base even, if they can be thinking, get the lead runner here. They don't need to turn two, although that would be nice. Nice pitcher by Nick there again. Now, good example we talked about earlier, just going right after the hitter again. You know, a little bit yeah. of a bobble in the infield, but go right after the batter, get yep. that out. He's got a short memory. Oh, just missed on the outside. It'll be curious to see how long uh, Coach Butler goes with Nick now, if he, as, he, yeah, as, he, my, as he progresses now in this inning. I haven't tracked his pitch count. My hunch is he's getting up towards 60, so he's probably not too far from going to a reliever. You gotta wonder if we lose a batter in a walk or something, if he's gonna make a change here. Early in the year, do you wanna overcook a pitcher yet too much? Well, that not only the pitch count, but you want him to leave with some confidence, like leave on a on a high note, for instance, if he can get through this inning with a low you know, number of pitches thrown here, then, then he can relieve him and Nick will feel great about having pitched an excellent game. So now we've got two runners on, one out. Yeah, good no. hit there, yep. In, inside no. out, just like Jonah did last inning for us. Their batter did the same thing, dumping this one into right, and they've got a little something going. And he knew Grand Rapids had a good baseball program for many years, so he knew they weren't going to lie down the whole game. Yeah, look, the coaches are talking right now. They're wondering what you went, know, what the maybe they'll buy a little bit more time. This may be it here for Nick, but again, heck of a job he yeah. threw today. Just a beautiful game. He should, he should feel great about it. You know, you, like I said a minute ago, you want to leave on a high note as often as you can, but you don't always get to do that. But he should still feel great in him. Hopefully the crowd will give him a nice hand here if he is relieved for. Yep. Great job by Nick. So nice job, a good big hand by Nick Johnson here. Good job pitching, just a beautiful effort. Great job by Nick. Yeah, and his teammates, the guys on the bench are all shaking his hand and making him feel good about his performance. And now we'll see what, uh, I believe this is Evan Cleary who is a senior. With Johnson's day being done, now pitching for Egan, Evan, Cleary, number eight. So now his job here, Jeff, is just come in, get ahead, stay ahead. And uh, it's okay if balls are put into play, just get your outs, you get a six run lead. And you don't need to strike out the side. We'll have some downtime. And Evan throughout his career has been a pitch to contact hitter as well. He's not dominant with his speed or his movement, but he's around the dish and trusts his infield. It's a good pitcher to have in the reliever role. You see Julie Burgum's enjoying some Fritos, walking up the uh, steps in the grandstand. I still appreciate they mentioned that to the Eakin faithful. Appreciate that. It's the best chip out there. <laughs> My kids and I have been having an ongoing battle about what the best chips are. They're, they're all hot on these fiery Cheetos, crunchy Cheetos now. I can't handle them. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Frito stalwart. Well, thank goodness, Pete, you are in peak physical condition. You don't go on for that stuff, right? I mean, come on. Well, come on. Try to get, you know, you get up to 50, Jeff, you get that metabolism keeps dropping down. You can't eat all that I tell you what, Pete, often. your wife, Angela, is a lucky woman. Let me just tell you right there, right oh. now, right for the record. That's good that, <laughs> that's good that you're not the only one who's uh, recognized that. I've, I've recognized that for years. And we've heard that. We've I've, heard that I've, recognizing. And I've brought it <laughs> to your years. attention. I've brought it to your attention. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> <laughs> a 
All right, here's where you just want to do the routine things well. Keep it together. You don't want the floodgates to open. So if you've got a sure out, make the sure out. If you've got a good chance at a double play, let's spin it. You want So Grand Rapids, a little bit of pressure now being applied in this top of the fifth inning. One out. Nice pitch. Stay down, turn it. Good turn here. Good choice by Jackson yeah. Hammond. Wasn't going to get him. That's a nice no throw there, but good pitch here by Clary. Gets yeah. that second out. That was a softly hit ball. Aiden Byrne did a nice job fielding it. Made a nice feed to Jackson. And earlier in the game, or without such a big lead, maybe you take a crack at getting that second out, but good choice not to. Now you can get the force at second, or just to play at first. Good job of pitching there by Evan. So one and all. Two outs, top of fifth. That's a base hit that'll score a run. Yeah, nice solid ball hit there. Past the shortstop. No harm done. No, nope. only seven Aiden two. Didn't have a chance at that one. One one run across. So we got two outs, top of fifth. So clear you should go right after the hitter now. And again, trust your defense, be around the dish. Nice pitch, beautiful curve that came right in there. Yeah, caught him, caught him off guard, I think. Nice ball there by Cleary. Senior right-hander. There's a lot of pressure on relievers and the best thing they can do is just throw a lot of strikes. That same pitcher just missed the inside corner, one and one. Again, what a beautiful day here at Wildcat Park. First home opener for the Wildcats. Yeah, they'll head into conference play or back into conference play this coming week. And they got a tilt against Lakeville South, I believe, on Monday. You know, I don't know a lot about South. I, North is the vaunted team of the two Lakeville schools, but Lakeville South has been solid. They've, they made it to the state tournament a handful of years ago, and they haven't fallen off that much. Oh, good hold up there, a good pitch. Yeah, good. Good effort there by Evan. Threw a nice curveball, started it down the middle half of the plate, and it broke hard toward the outside plate, and the batter wanted to go after it, but showed good discipline. Good pitch there, right in the hands. Yep. Count, count remains at two and two. Batter's battling here, he's probably uh, Heartened by the fact that his teammates have put another run on the board here and he wants to come through for his teammates. 7-2, top of fifth. And nice job by Cleary, beautiful effort by Cleary there. Excellent pitch. Excellent spot on the plate. Hey, God bless America, get up here, let's go. For the plane of God bless America. We're going to announce anything for the 50 50 raffle? Okay. 
ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our very own Lauren Hart as she carries on the voice of the Flyers by singing our song, God Bless America. And we're back at the Wildcat Park, Pete, bottom of fifth. You can up 7-2. And Matthew Bergham at the plate, right fielder for Egan, Jr. Yeah, nice job last inning getting out of a, some damage, some potential harm. 
Great job by Evan Cleary coming in as a reliever throwing a lot of strikes. See if we can get something going again. So Matthew, bottom of five. Matthew looks like he's uh, got a lot of confidence at the plate this year, Jeff. I think, I think it seems like the whole team has been real, real patient at the plate. They're making the pitchers work, which is what you want to have see, you know, see done out there. Yeah, and it's not a defensive stance. It's not like they don't want to hit and put a good swing on it. They're just, as you said, patient. There is a nice base hit by Matthew. Excellent start. See if Jack can get something going here following up Matthew's hit. Stepping to the plate, first baseman, number 13, Jack Stump. So Jack Stump, senior first baseman, having a good game as well. Boy, Jack gets a hold of the ball, Pete. That thing is going. He's a real heavy hitter out there. Just he's got a lot of bat speed. And again, he's kind of like Jonah. If you catch him middle and in, uh, he can do. Outside corner there. On one. Nice eye by Jack to lay off that pitch. Yeah, that's a slow looping curveball. That's one where you've. Boy, that was like, I want to hit that thing a mile, <laughs> and he held off nicely. Yeah, that's, that's one where your front foot's always going to go, and then if you can keep your hands back, you can still handle it. Great jump by Matthew there. Excellent steal of second. And again, you're, to your point, Pete, earlier, it looks like the coaches have been pretty aggressive this year on base running. They don't want to get in that double play position, so they, they're, they're going to be aggressive today. Yeah, it, you know, thinking back to last year, I think we relied on our hitters a little more, and this year Coach Butler wants to put some heat on with some aggressive base running. I like it. Oh, nice cut there by Jack. The big difference between hitting a single with a runner on first as opposed to second. Nice hold off by Jack. Good patience at the plate. Jack's been around for a while. Senior played well last year as a junior and good baseball IQ yeah, for Jack. Very good. Good. Foul there to hang in there. Yeah, I'm sure the Grand Rapids pitcher doesn't know he should work Jack on the outside half, but he is. And he's just inducing a lot of foul balls right now. But if he makes a mistake, middle or in, Jack's going to do something with it. Great eye. Good eye. Good job by Jack to really work the count, work the base, and now a nice job by him getting on base. Now we got something cooking, Pete. Yeah, you got the sophomore up again, Aiden Byrne, and my hunch is at least at least once, maybe twice. I, I'm guessing he'll get the sign for a sack bunt. See if he can push over runners to second and third with one out. Wouldn't be surprised at all if that's what his plan is. He was swinging there. Yeah, I like it. You know, give the sophomore some confidence. Let him go after some. You know, Aiden's been put in a, in, a, in a nice little pressure cooker early as a sophomore. He got some runners on base, and here you go, varsity plan. Here you go. Yep. Welcome. Yep. You got to grow up and sometimes slowly, sometimes quickly. Good and job of base running there by Jack and Matthew. And they couldn't see where that ball was. They, they wanted to kind of hold up, not get caught, but then they saw it go behind and yeah. they advance. And that's one where your hitter, if he knows where it is, he can be very helpful to his base runner, running teammates and wave them over. So no outs, guys on Jack and second, Matthew and third. And nice eye by Aiden now really up in the count now, I think it's two and one. Yeah, his mindset here is just, he doesn't care where it goes, just hit something hard, even if it's a ground ball, it's gonna push across a run. Nice cut there by Burton. He was he was listening to what you're saying back up here in the press box, Pete. Get that, get that contact, get that, get that runner to the to the plate. Could be off speed here. Base runners have to be alert. Count two and two. Oh, that. 
<laughs> Boy, I thought that the, the, the fans are yelling, don't duck, Aiden. Take yeah. that one for the team. Yeah, I think Aiden's uh, upset at himself for not taking right. the hit by pitch and loading the bases. That wasn't even close. That was that was to the outside of him. Nice right. job there, buddy. That was a good pitch. He fouled that off. That was a nasty pitch. Yeah, he's staying alive. This is this is one of those quality at bats where, you know, regardless of the outcome, he can feel good about working that count. He's making the pitcher work. He's uh, giving himself a chance to hit something hard. He's not uh, caving in at all. He's aggressive. Full count, three and two, no outs. Bottom of five. And that, might, that might go fair. No, that's foul. Good hustle by Aiden. That's one of those where, with that spin, you never know if it's going to work its way back across the chalk or even to the chalk. And to your point, Pete, you know, good at bat by Aiden. He's really battling. If, if anything, he's making that pitcher work for it. Yeah, he's got an eight or nine pitch at bat here. And the more of those you have, the more, the, the more confident you're going to get as a hitter. And it's going to serve you well over the long term. So count remains full. Runners just need to look for a pass ball here also. Uh, get down, get down, get down. And that's a foul ball. Again, Wind took that's that little bit. Ninth or tenth pitch, and this at bat. Excellent job by Aiden. He's a little lankier. He's a uh, good, a good fielder. And I think uh, Coach Butler wants to see what he can do at short with his range. And he's got a decent enough arm, even as a sophomore, where if he, he's going to be a vital cog in this Wildcat team for a few years. And nice job by Bernie. That's in a beautiful single. Nice awesome. RBI. Awesome at That's bat. That's a great at bat. He knocks in two runs. Fantastic. So good job there by Aiden. Boy, that'll give you some confidence as a sophomore, huh? Not that we necessarily needed the two runs, but they're always uh, well, welcome this late in the game. But again, it, what's been nice to see so far this early season, Pete, is the the the. the Patience and presence at the plate and in yeah, the field. I mean, this is this is nice to see. That was a great mix of good hard swings. He did not have a tentative swing in that at bat, and he uh, he showed that even on the foul balls. So nice job there by Aiden at uh, the battle there. And you know, one yeah. thing I'm seeing there too, Pete, you look at the bench or you look at the upperclassmen, you know, Jack came out there and Matthew came out there to give Aiden the old high five. And that says a lot, you know, he's a sophomore. So you got these yeah. guys, the teammates that they're all supporting each other. I don't, they don't care how old you are. Hey, you're on the team, yeah. you support you. And, yeah. that, and that, that speaks volumes for the younger players. Baseball, maybe more than any other sport, is such a, a unique team sport in that you're an individual for much of the game. When you're at the plate, you're an individual. The result help, you know, works its way into the team part of it. When you're a pitcher, same thing. When you're a fielder and you've got a ball coming at you, you're on the spot, you know, and it's all about what kind of play you're gonna make on it. And there Aiden just battled and battled and uh, he's given his team some confidence and uh, certainly given himself a huge amount of confidence. Remember to sign up for Egan Wildcat baseball camps this summer through District 196 Community Ed. Camps are available for grades one through eight, are led by Coach Butler and his EHS coaching staff. More information is available at the check-in booth as well as online on the District 196 Community Ed website. We'll see if Jackson Amon can find his form from the other day at Apple Valley where he hit a couple solid line drives. My hunch is Aiden's got good speed I don't think he's going to bunt here, but I do think he's probably going to send him within the first couple of pitches, see if he can get another runner in scoring position for Jackson. And again, it was nice too here, Pete, in the bottom of the fifth inning, doing some damage and no outs. So yeah. again, you've got, you got some uh, potential here to really bust this thing wide open. Yeah, five, for sure. Jackson, you can Amen. tell, uh, we've been talking about it throughout the game, but Coach Butler loves having guys in scoring position. You know, we're not a team that's built of made up of a bunch of home run hitters or gap double hitters. 
There are a lot of singles and doubles, and uh, you just need guys in scoring position. Well, don't tell that to Pellegrum, you know. Well, one exception. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jackson Allman at the plate, number five, second baseman. Mm. Oh, and two, nice pitch there. Not much Jackson can do that. Kind of handcuffed him. It kind of came bit. in. Yeah, we're kind of ran in on him, but now he's got a guard. Nice cut there by Jackson. So Cole Pavlinski, senior outfielder number 12, again, or one of our many multi-sport athletes on the team. I'm guessing Aiden's going to be off at the pitch here in the first couple pitches. One note about Aiden, which is interesting, he kind of dinged up his ankle at practice the other day and got some stitches in the foot, and they asked the, doc asked the doctor, well, can he play? And the doctor said, well, you, you maybe could go, but if you go, you may rip it again, and you may have to come back to get it restitched. And Aiden says, I'm going to play. So here you well, are. And maybe that's why he's not taking off from And first. I think that could be one of the reasons why he's not don't want to aggravate that ankle anymore and you have to. But again, a hats off to Aiden and his competitiveness, you know, that yeah. wants to play. And he's a gamer. You got a chance to play. You don't want to give that spot up to, uh, due to an injury. So. so now Cole runs out the count three and one. Yeah, pitcher's got a... Uh, I don't know if it's a splitter, but it kind of moves like a splitter. That was a, just what you just called there, Pete. That moved quite a bit. Nice pitch. And again, that's number 16 for the for Grand Rapids. That's Bo Anderson, another outfielder. <clears throat> so count is full, one out. We'll see what. Poplinski can do here. And nice eye, works the base, another base on ball. So now we are still at one out. Yeah, we'll see what Caden Gage can do here. Another senior leader. Another multi-sport athlete, Cage, a good athlete, going around. Team player. He's headed to uh, Augustana next year, which is his uh, I believe it's Augustana, or did I hear Augsburg? You know, I don't, I... I think it's Augsburg. His dad I, went to Augustana. Augsburg, I believe. And even though he was a high school wrestler and Augustana has one of the best wrestling programs in the country, he's not going to be wrestling. I believe he's going to be playing baseball for Augsburg. Augsburg, another up-and-coming program, the MIAC. They, they have fun with it. They do a lot of traveling in the early spring. They go down yep. south and play some ball, and I think a lot of the teams do that now. They really are taking more... A little more serious tone in the baseball. Yeah, for sure. Nice cut there by Caden. Who would you say, Pete, as far as the MIAC? Is it Bethel kind of one of the premier teams in the, or what would you yeah, say as last, far as the? the last few years, you know, St. Thomas over the long haul, maybe the last 20 years has been the stalwart. St. John's in the last five years has been outstanding. Uh, Bethel's made a few runs, McAllister. Augsburg, Gustavus, there. You know, it used to be when I was in college that you'd have three teams. Back then it was usually Olaf, St. Mary's, St. John's, and maybe St. Thomas, maybe four teams battling for the title. Now it's any one of six or eight teams. And what you want to do is just get, position yourself to get into the six team Mayak playoffs because the winner of the playoffs gets an automatic berth in the NCAAs, and that's a lot of fun. So Gage there popped out to first base. That was her second out here at the bottom of the fifth. Now at the bat of Drew Grunkley. That's going to go. I could get back behind him. Mm. Oh, nice recovery by the right fielder. Took yeah. a step or two in, then came back. Yeah, he almost made the cardinal sin there of an outfielder. His first step was in, and the wind is shifting now, and they almost got the go best of him. Time. Grab all your blue tickets. I think there's a few left still down to check in. Booth. Ticket number two, three.
Welcome back to Wildcat Park. Top of the sixth inning, the Egan Wildcats lead Grand Rapids nine to two on the hill. In his second inning is Evan Cleary. Started out with a outside pitch, another one. Good job, induced a ground ball. Nice play by Jack Stumpf. One out. Now batting, number 12, Wyatt Zulke. Great start by Evan, just two pitches to induce that first out of the inning. Doing an excellent job in the relief roll. Good spot there by Evan inside half of the plate. Batter couldn't do a lot with that one. Again, Egan's just playing a fundamentally sound game today, which is outstanding to see, especially early in the season, because that should only get better as the weather gets better and they get more reps outside. And again, with their pitchers not being overly dominant power pitchers. They're gonna to pitch to a lot of contact. The more consistently we can field, the better we'll be. Good line drive to left center field, kind of mishandled by our left fielder slightly to let him get to second. Kind of handcuffed him, kind of got that uh, that turf as we talked about earlier, Pete, real hard, so it kind of bopped up now a little bit higher, got Grand by, I think it was AJ out there, Pataglia, so got a double out of that, but again, no harm done. One out, top of six, Egan up nine to two. Cleary's still pitching a real nice game. Yep. Again, a real nice tip of the cap to Nick Johnson again, Pete. Yeah, really had a job. Nice, nice nice job out there. Threw the ball well with authority, had confidence, and really went after the batters all day. Yeah, he did, and uh, Evans come in and done the same thing. Again, as a reliever, that's all you really want to do. You're never going to mow down the whole team, so you just want to get some balls put in play and let your defense do its job. And again, top of six, but you never, you never say never in baseball. They could, uh, they, you know, you never know. So you want to kind of take care of business and get the outs. And yeah, Twins had a five-run lead yesterday and lost by six. I thought we talked. We weren't going to talk about those old we Twins today, but it seemed relevant. <laughs> Against the mighty Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. <laughs> that sneaks in. Get it in. Yeah, nice job there by Cole to get that ball in. Yeah, and Jack Stumpf did a nice job there as a first baseman. He was exactly where he needed to be as the relay guy. And he prohibited the, uh, prevented the, the batter from getting the second on the throw in from right field. So one out still, top of six. Rapids has got something cooking here. Man on first and third, again, one out. Yeah, what would be great to see here is a hard ground ball to second or short concede the run, turn a double play. Looks like they've got or someone get out of the inning with the double warming play. up here in the bull. I don't know, bullpen, not, not sure who that is, but again, Evan's still pitching well, throwing strikes. And don't want to give them too many more opportunities as far as runners go. Just throw strikes. Trust your defense. There we go, nice pitch there by Evan again. Trying to kind of, you get that, regain that strike zone as a pitcher, kind of get that confidence back again and go after him and make, yeah. make the hitters hit. Yeah, he's right around the plate every pitch, which is great to see. Nice pitch there. 
Nice job there oh. by Cole. Beautiful catch. That Excellent. Was a, boy, he took a step in, then he recovered nicely and kind of basket that catch. Not not uh, the ideal catching position, but he did. They got the job done. Yeah, get the second out, and that's all you want with a lead like we have. Still a six-run lead, and he. Uh, you know, I wonder if they're taking that first step in because the wind is blowing in. Um, you know, today at least, maybe it's not such a bad idea. You just don't want to be caught. It looks like the wind's died down quite a bit. It was a little gustier earlier yeah. in the day. Now yeah. it's kind of, that look of the flag isn't moving much out there. And in left center. Yeah, nice ground ball. A routine play here would be nice. Get out of the inning, go back and hit. So 9-3. Count two and one. Again, two outs. That's a base hit. And they're kind of chipping away at it now, nine four. Yeah, nice line drive again. And we talked about this at that first game, Pete. You get that, you got those two outs, and it seems at times that third out is that elusive third out. Just, just want to get that out and, and head her back to the yeah. dugout. Yeah, there's going to be a little discussion here with the pitching coach. Yeah, if nothing else, I don't know that Evan really needs it, but uh, no. maybe it throws their hitters off a little bit with a, I don't want to say ices them, but you know, breaks the routine and they're, gets in the way of their momentum a little. He left instructions since Jack is the Egan Baseball Association president that he'll be donating all of his half, which is $540, to the Peterson family. So, once again, the Peterson family takes home all $1,080. Thank you, Jack, and thank you all for donating to the 50 50 raffle and helping out the Peterson family. <clears throat> so Cleary stays in, and we are still on the top of the sixth here. Now 9-4, Grand Rapids is getting a couple runs here in the top of the sixth. Runner on first base, still two outs, Cleary on the mound, throwing well. They just had a couple good hits there, Pete, line drive singles. Yeah, they're staying at it. They're, uh, they certainly haven't given up, uh, and they're chipping away, like you said, and you never know where that might go. We got five runs on two. Two outs a couple days ago in Apple Valley, so anything can happen. Yeah, nice pitcher by Cleary again. Count one and one. Again, in baseball, especially, probably no other sport out there like baseball is that you just never know. You just have to play every inning, play through it, and move on, but it's no lead is real safe. No, momentum's a funny thing in baseball. You can gain it from the, you know, littlest things. You can lose it from the littlest things, and... Uh, well, that consecutive hits will give you all kinds of momentum. You need that last out, that last strike, that last hit, and it could be elusive as get out. Nice pitch here by Cleary, count two and two. So again, don't want to lose this batter now to base on ball, so he still has room here, two and two. And that's going to drop in for a single. So again, now uh, Pete, they're kind of chipping away. They're not that, that, we've had that two outs on the board there for a while. Yeah. We just got to get that. Right, 10 minutes worth of a two out uh, scoreboard number. Now batting for Grand Rapids, number one, Cody Miller. So just get that. Much easier set up here than down there, right, Pete? But I just get that last out, you know, just get that nice ground out there. Sophomore Reese Leitenberg is in the pen. Uh, might get the nod here. 
I would guess that Evans got one more batter. And then if we get out of this, I would, my hunch is uh, Reese will start out the uh, top of the seventh. We need to get out of this one first. They do have eight hits. They've out hit us today. We've just bunched our hits at the right time. So again, to your point, Pete, you want to make sure or really want to have Evan get out of, get out of the scene here. And uh, if you're going to bring Leitenberg in, you want to bring him in the top of seventh. Mm -hmm. You want to have him come in here with a bases loaded situation. Yeah, you know, as a sophomore. As a sophomore, yep. that's a big time pressure there. So right now I'm, I'm imagining that the Grand Rapids hitters are going to hold off. They want to see a strike. Mm -hmm. so they're not going to be swinging up much right now. Mm -mm. That's a lot of pressure on Evan. Ooh, that just missed, so we've got a 3-0 count. They'll be, they're going to hold off on this. Yeah, he's got a big ladder to climb here, but he's just got to get a strike under his belt and, and see what happens. There's a good pitch. That was a good inside shot there. That was right on the edge, too. That's living on the, on the edge side. Yeah, here's a, what my hunch is. It's probably going to be... Um, Pretty aggressive here if he can. If he gets a good pitch to hit, he's going to get to put a swing on it. Ooh, must have been high. Looked right down the middle, but now we got bases loaded. So now it gets interesting. Yeah, you, you bring a soft. I don't think yeah. I don't. Bases boy. loaded, or you let Evan clean it up. I think yeah. Don't you got to let him clean it up? And I don't know if you bring. I us, think you do because I mean, well, here he comes. And just like we were, you and I were saying. <laughs> So, 9-4 game on top of six. Now they're going to bring in the sophomore, Reese Leitenberg, number 19. Clear as day is done. Now pitching for Eagle Wildcats. Sophomore, number 19, Reese Leitenberg. Again, batting for Grand Rapids number seven. Left fielder Mike Heitkamp. So we are now at the still top of the six, two outs. Bases are loaded. Grand Rapids threatening. Sophomore Reese Leitenberg on the hill. Pitch is a little high. I don't know. So a big spot here for the sophomore coming in. Younger player, so really a big test here for him early in the year. Reese is a good right-handed thrower. And they're going to step on the bag. A nice job there by Leitenberg to get that out. It's a huge play by 
the sophomore right-hander to get out of that inning. Still only down up nine to four, so good job by Reese. Don't prize time. Got a few more prizes left at the check-in booth. Back to Wildcat Park here, folks, coming at you at the bottom of the sixth inning. Egan got out of that one with just a couple runs allowed. Bases were loaded, and Reese Leitenberg came on there, a sophomore right-hander, to get that last out of the sixth inning there for Egan. So preserving that 9-4 to four lead here in the bottom of the sixth. At the plate, here's senior catcher number four, Tommy Schiltz. Yeah, it'd be great to see us put up another run or two here. Just gonna get back those two we gave up, which they earned. They were certainly hard hit balls by Grand Rapids. And and, and hats off to Grand Rapids, they haven't given up. They, mm -hmm. they're, they've been poking away and you chip away at that lead. And, yep. and now you find yourselves, you know, nine to four, could be nine to five, so. Yeah, they made a long trip down here. They're gonna give it their all. So Tommy's at the plate. Tommy, another senior leader in the team, real good hitter, real mm -hmm. good contact hitter, heavy hitter. Also plays catcher, does a nice job behind the plate. And nice poke there by Tommy. That's gonna get through, That's a, that handcuffed the nice third hustle. baseman. So again, nice job by Tommy. Yeah, he got down the line quickly there. So any little bobbles, he's gonna beat it out. Left fielder, number 14, AJ, but take me out. So number 14, A.J. Pataglia. Yeah, Tommy's got some good wheels, so you may see a bunt and run here or just a sack bunt. Nice eye by A.J. We talked about A.J. throughout the day. Pete, another, you know, just a good athlete, multi-positional player. Mm -hmm. Nice to have that, nice to have that on your team. You can put him pretty much anywhere. 
Yeah, he almost got caught there. Uh, he, he, uh, he was, it was close. It was like, ball okay. beat him, but his, uh, his hand got back to the bag. I don't know how. It's a nice hit there by AJ. It's going to pop. That's going to be caught by the center fielder. Nice play by Grand Rapids. Yeah, one he, down. It's one of those tailing off a left handed bat. It tailed into left center. The center fielder had to cover a lot of acreage out there, but did a nice job. Matthew at the plate, right fielder. Boy, Tommy takes that aggressive lead and he doesn't break back real early, so he makes it interesting <laughs> when they yeah, get those throws back. He's got a lead that suggests he's taken off. It could be a hit and run here. There he goes. Well, nice job there by Tommy to get that now. Yeah, very good jump. Now he's in scoring position for Matthews. Had a nice day at the plate. We'll see what Matthew can do here. Got a strike called against him so far. 0-1. It's going to be just out. So now you got to protect a little bit. Now you find yourself down 0 2. Yep, got to battle. See if you can keep the battle alive for a few good pitches until you see one you like. Good eye. <clears throat> 1 and 2. Tommy, you know, if he sees a ground ball, he's going to be off right away. Matthew could deliver a single here. That'd be huge. Oh, got him looking there. Good pitch. Yeah, a really good pitch. That one started out on the outside of the plate, even out of the zone, and then broke back into the zone. Tough one to handle. All right, here goes Jack. Come on now. First baseman. Good pitch there again. Yeah, he's getting a nice, he's got some good bat speed on that, but again, I think his, his front foot is just pulling out slightly, which is bringing his hips and his head with it, and he's just missing that ball. Good eye by Jack, one to one. Good cut there by Jack. Yeah, that one he stayed on a little longer. If he can keep that front foot just going straight toward the pitcher's mound, he's gonna it'll serve him well. It's one of those things when you're a young hitter, if that's the habit you develop, it's kind of a tough one to break out of. Nice hit there by Jack. That's gonna hopefully draw. It's gonna be up there a little bit too much. And that'll be it. All right, quick inning by Grand Rapids there. So now we're all, this is it. here we are. Got to play D. Let's see if Reese is coming back out. Looks like he is. So three outs here. Three, out, three outs away. We'll be back here for the start of the seventh inning shortly. Egan up 9-4 over Grand Rapids. Monday, 3 o'clock, doubleheader, Lakeville South. Mother Nature told me to say this, but it is weather committee. Have a few left door prizes here. Blue tickets. Winning numbers 
And we're back here at Wildcat Park. Jeff Bergen, Pete Amon, top of the seventh inning. Reese Leitenberg on the hill, sophomore right-hander, brought yeah. in to close out this game. Reese is uh, tall and lanky like his dad. He's got a great pitching pedigree. His dad, Kerry, pitched for eight or nine seasons in the majors, mainly as a closer. And uh, had a distinguished career with the Atlantic Braves. I'm sure he's given Reese all the fundamentals he needs to know. Yeah, I wonder what kind of camps Reese has gone to. <laughs> <laughs> he's well, got one dad, of the best coaches around. Yeah, Kerry's been the pitching coach for the St. Paul Saints for the last few years, and he works with some high-quality pitchers, and he does a little on the side as well uh, to individuals, and I'm sure he's, he's given what he's got to uh, Reese, and now it's just a matter of Reese taking ownership. Nice pitch there by Reese again. Nice job. You got that first out, Pete. Yeah. It's always such a critical out in that top of the seven. You don't want to give him any kind of momentum for any kind of a, a rally. No, he's starting off. He's getting ahead. So he's, nice he's job. Fearless. Yeah, just 0 and 2. Again, when you talk to Kerry, you know, he'll, three, he'll tell you time and time again, it just drives Kerry nuts that these pitchers don't throw strikes. You know, and they just, you give these free base on balls, and that can kill you. Well, he's, he's looking mature beyond his years with how he's uh, going right at these yeah. hitters. And he's a sophomore, so this, this bodes well for Egan for, for several years. You've got Reese out there, you've got Aiden Byrne, you've got some younger players yep. contributing. Yeah, and the funny thing was I asked uh, Kerry the other night if Reese loves pitching. He said, eh. Might have a different attitude yeah. about it after today's performance. Yeah, I think, I think I've heard the same thing, that uh, Reese isn't overly maybe thrilled about the pitching position. But does a nice job. Well, he sure has great and fundamentals nice job and form. By nice strike out there. Excellent pitch. It's a great job there by Reese, the sophomore. Boy, he's somebody with his frame. His mom and dad start giving him some more and more protein. He's going to add some muscle, and he's going to be tough to handle. Again, you got to remind yourself he's a sophomore. So to have a sophomore like out here throwing in a, in a crucial part of the game. Yep. Invaluable experience early in the season because he's going to He's going to see time against some very good teams later in the, in the conference schedule. There you go, Carrizo. Good job. Well, up one and one on the count. Again, two outs. You're one out away. But again, we talked about earlier, Pete, that last out can be real elusive. Mm -hmm. You just want to get go after it pitch by pitch. Nice job. Barehanded. Great play. And nice job by Reese, and that's a great job by Egan, and a super job by Leitenberg. They come, I can't tell you enough what pressure that is for any player, but to be have that done as a sophomore, that's, yeah. that speaks volumes. Oh, that's great, a, great start to the season. We're two and one early. One and one of the conference, and a uh, nice win against a quality Grand Rapids team here in their home opener. Congrats to the Wildcats. And I want to give a special shout out to our camera crew. We've got uh, Tom Stump there on visitor's bench. Beautiful job, Tom. Thank you. Dean Miller over there working the camera on top of the home dugout for Egan. Thanks, guys. You did a great job with the crew. Thanks to ETV. Thanks to Casey. Casey, our announcer, Casey Lux. Pete Nauman, thanks for being here. ETV crew, big shout out to the Egan uh, Baseball Boosters, uh, the parents, uh, Sharon Stump, Angela Amon, all organized this event as far as the Youth Day, Alumni Day. Uh, what, a, what a phenomenal turnout. We've had a huge crowd here and just, a, just an all around phenomenal day for Egan Baseball. So on behalf of Egan Baseball, ETV, thanks for watching. Final score at Wildcat Park. Egan 9, Grand Rapids 4, Jeff Bergen, Pete Amman checking out. We'll see you next time for ETV and Egan Baseball.